I ask you, what is that in you uh, behind you? <laughs> That's my uh, LED machine. Is it? Oh, here. Uh, are we live? Let's see. We might be. Where? Yep, we are live now. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I Today is a pleasure to have my guest, but before I go in, uh, welcome everybody. This is Mon uh, Wednesday, w Wednesday, yeah, w Wednesday, not Monday. <laughs> I got my days all mixed up. This is what happened when you're uh, um, stay at home for too long and you start losing that track of time. So we are live on Wednesday live coffee talk show and I'm Michelle Quay. I'm a confidence and leadership coach and I work with negative self talkers to get them to believe the talents that they have in both personal and professional life. Today, our topic is finding the inner fox. Do you have an inner fox within you? And what does it mean to reconnect with your inner fox? It's a pleasure to have my speaker, uh, Terry Fox. When he was 17, Terry's mom was diagnosed with a chronic and painful autoimmune disease called fibromyalgia. And inspired, inspired to relieve her pain, Terry was lead to um, Utah College of Massage Therapy. And when he graduated, he started to help in creating the first hospital-based massage therapy program in the state of Wyoming. And four years later, Terry progressed into acupuncture. Terry doesn't just treat skin deep. He sees deeper and works with a holistic approach. Women come to him for his expertise, but they also trust him because of his gentle na nature and keen intuition. And his patient loves him because his heart is wholly connected to their transformation. He leads and inspires women to reconnect with their own inner healing capacity and return to their authentic self, which cultivate their unique personal power, that inner fox that we are talking about. So without further ado, please join me with a warm welcome, Terry Fox. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Michelle. Thank you so much for inviting me on your show. Thank you so much for being here. I remember that we had connected during the lockdown. I was looking around, I was inviting for speaker and there you are, you reach out to me and <clears throat> we connected. And that conversation was so amazing. I had a great time talking to you. You're very calm, very soothing. And I can almost imagine you in your practice and just helping patients reconnecting themselves. So I would love to hear more about your story, your journey. How did you become a acupuncture and also a massage therapist? Well, that's, uh, I'll, I'll give you the kind of abridged version. <laughs> that started, like you, like you said, when I was 17, my mom was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And for your listeners, who don't know what that is, that's a, it's an autoimmune disease. And nobody really quite knows the, the causative factors as of yet, but there's a lot of chronic pain and fatigue that go into it. Your body hurts and it hurts all over and the pain can move from place to place. And that pain's really uh, draining on your energy. And so it becomes very difficult to function with fibromyalgia. And my mom was the high school secretary in the little town that we grew up in, in uh, Wyoming. And so we'd come home from school, me, my brother, my mom, and she'd say, well, can somebody rub my shoulders? I just, I, I hurt. So after a while, I kind of became the designated shoulder rubber. She'd say, well, your, your dad rubs too hard. Your, your brother just can't do it right. You, you've, got, you've got the touch. <laughs> and so one day while I was working on her shoulders, out of the blue, she said, you know, maybe you ought to think about doing this professionally. And man, that was like a light bulb went off on my head. I went, I can 
I can do that. And so that was when I was 17. Fast forward a couple of years later, there, there weren't any massage therapy schools in Wyoming at the time. So I ended up going to Salt Lake City, Utah College of Massage Therapy. And it was there that I got my first really strong exposure to uh, acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine theory and acupressure and Japanese shiatsu and applied kinesiology and these different forms of body work that were all kind of based in traditional Chinese medicine theory. And so I got out of massage therapy school and ended up getting a job in Laramie at Ivinson Hospital. They were starting their first hospital-based massage therapy program. And I was using acupressure in the hospital on patients. And I had some results that I thought, duh, gone. If these people had an acupuncturist, well, they, they might not even be in here. Maybe, maybe I better think about going to acupuncture school. And so when the program got canned, priorities changed, the administration changed, and you know, it was a good thing because I got to go to acupuncture school. So I, I went to Denver to the Colorado School of Traditional Chinese Medicine and got my master's degree. And in 2006, I got out of there and started Artesian Spring Oriental Medicine. And here I am today, several years later. <laughs> I, 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 love, I love this whole story. I, I always been very fascinated by by hearing a lot of people's uh, the stories. And, and what's fascinated to me is that one, one simple comment from your mom, you know, you're really good at this. Maybe you should think about pursuing this for, for as a career. And that kind of just, you know, light up the, uh, the, the light bulb in, in your head and say, yeah, you know, I'm pretty good with this. And what came up for me was that phrase, you rub me the wrong way. And apparently that's not you, that's not the case. You rubbed her the good way and <laughs> therefore, yeah, maybe this is something that you want to look into. Was that was that something that you always knew that that that's what you wanted? Because you were at seventeen when you were watching her going through her journey and having all these pain, and and I'm pretty sure, um, just speaking from my own personal experience, that painful moment it's really painful, and when you are painful, you become bitter. Have you ever felt? that with your interaction with your with your mom you know my mom is one of the bravest and and toughest people i think i've ever met mm -hmm. uh she there there are times when she gets down where where the pain does does get to her but uh she has a very strong faith life and that that woman has a connection with, with the good Lord. <laughs> and it, that, that faith life really helps move her through those, those dark times. But um, no, when it comes to where I was at, no, I didn't, ex I didn't expect to become a massage therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, at 17, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I knew that uh, I was really interested in English and writing. And I ended up, when I got out of high school, I ended up going to a junior college just to kind of figure things out because there wasn't a massage therapy school in the state at that time. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just go to junior college. So I did get an associate's degree in English with, with a writing emphasis. And I thought, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll be a writer or an English teacher. And then when I got my associate's degree, I thought, is this really what I want to do? Maybe... Maybe, uh, maybe I better look into this massage therapy gig a little bit deeper. And as I did, I went, okay, yeah, this is, this is what I'm going to do. And as, as I went through the training and started working on people, it was like, oh yeah, this is, I enjoy this. And damn, I'm, I'm actually good at this. Okay, here's, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of how I ended up there. Mm -hmm. So, so it sounds like it wasn't, it wasn't like a moment of, you know, this is this is something I wanted to do. Massage therapist is something I wanted to do, or acupuncture is something I wanted to do, and therefore I'm just going to jump into it. It was more of a, a discovery, 
a journey of discovery where you started to recognize things that you love, things that you like, things that you enjoy doing, things that you're passionate about. And then it kind of dawned on you. It almost sounds like it dawned on you that, oh yeah, you know, once you start working with the patient, with, with people, then this is something that I truly enjoy, not English major. Yes. I mean, I still, I still enjoy writing and communicating, but uh, I get so much more enjoyment watching people in their transformation, either out of pain or uh, looking younger and healthier. Uh, man, that just, that lights up my world. So <laughs> I, I have a good time doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't wanna go into too much of the patient privacy portion, but it, what would be the most memorable um, transformational journey that you have witnessed in front of you um, as you're working one-on-one um, -on -one with people? Oh my goodness. Well, um, I think the most astonishing has been as, I, as I've gotten into the aesthetic and, and facial acupuncture work. Um, this, this is, uh, I mean, acupuncture is very holistic. When, when we work on a person, we're working on their body, but the body's also connected to the mind, the emotions and the spirit. And so it's very holistic. And so when I start working with someone in an aesthetic capacity, working with their face, I'm also working on their health. And so to see, I had a patient, uh, not long ago who came in and she was in her thirties, but she just, she had a couple of kids and a very busy lifestyle and she just looked so tired. And she had these really dark circles underneath her eyes, which is an indication of, yeah, your batteries are running low. You are so low on energy. And she started seeing me weekly. And over the course of about two months, two months, no, four months, sorry, 16 treatments and she was seeing me weekly. Um, so over the course of about four months, we were taking before and after pictures so that we could actually see the difference. And after those treatments, holy moly, the difference in her skin, she was glowing, she was soft, she was radiant. These dark circles weren't there and her energy level was way up. She said, yeah, I can, I can chase after my kids. I can, I can deal with my husband and work isn't so bad anymore. And when I get someone whose life gets improved just, just by receiving some needles and some intentional listening. That's the other part of this is I, I really get to listen to people. And when they're able to talk and truly express, you know, what's been going on with them, that makes a huge difference. You don't get that at the doctor's office. They don't have time for that. But here in my work, yes, you have somebody who gets to really authentically, truly listen and care and then provide you the support that you need. And oh, that makes such a big difference, a world of difference to people. And then they transform, their life gets better. And then that makes ripple effects out into the rest of the world. And she gets to take better care of her kids and better care of her husband. And they're happier and healthier because of what she's done. And so that, <laughs> that brings me a lot of joy, mm -hmm. a lot of joy. And I can hear your joy and your passion through your voice as you're talking the, about this whole transformational journey of hers. It, it really lights you up. And I love, I so enjoy people uh, describing what they're passionate about. And I, there's, a, there's a belief, I believe in uh, raising that one, con uh, one uh, consciousness one person at a time. So if we are able to help one person, that one person is going to go out there and spread what, what had impacted them, what made the difference in their life to someone else. And they are going to influence other people. And that's how this whole uh, love and humanity kind of just spread one person at a time. So I love what you do. And I really have a lot of um, respect and admiration for 
what you do in, in your work. Um, what I also heard was um, that interesting thoughts about how when you're working one-on-one -on -one with patients, even though it's acupuncture, facial acupuncture, even though it's something on their body, there's something else that you did to them in that massage room. And what came up for me is, you know, my my uh, my nail nail polish, my nail person probably know more secret than anybody in my life. <laughs> so, what do you think supposed to happen during those conversations? You know, it's it's interesting. I, I think deep down, and and especially with with the women that I work with. But all of us human beings have an innate need to be seen and to be heard and to be witnessed and to have someone who can simply hold space and say, yes, I see you, I hear you, and I'm here for you. And when a woman can feel seen and safe and heard, that makes such a huge difference in her life. And really for, for any person. So I, I, that, I think that's the main thing that happens there. That's, that's where the magic happens. Yeah. And, and I think that, that that's also leading to um, my, my question next would be, you know, we talk about that authentic self. So a lot of us go around and, and we're interacting with people. And the reason why we have, we aren't able to communicate freely with another person, the, the fact that we aren't able to feel that we're being heard, being seen and being, being, um, you know, like accepted is really about not being able to step into our true authentic self. So what is true authentic self to you? True authenticity is to me, uh, a radical honesty. <laughs> and it's not just a radical honesty with others, but, but with myself. And that's something I had to kind of figure out as, as my, oldest son went through his cancer treatment. Uh, when he was five, he was diagnosed with uh, acute lymphoblastic lymphoma, ALL. And uh, that was when he was five. He's, he's 12 now, he's gone through treatment. He's doing amazing, uh, becoming just such a, a great young adult. But uh, back then, I'd really, I'd really grown up in, in kind of cowboy culture in, in Wyoming. And, and we say, you know, you gotta, you gotta be tough and you can't show weakness. And so as my family was crumbling because of this cancer diagnosis, I felt like I had to be this big, strong, tough guy when inside I was crumbling too. And so because of this whole cognitive dissonance where I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm failing and I can't be strong. I want to be strong, but I can't be strong and I'm not feeling it. I, I ended up having a bit of a mental breakdown. I mean, I, I, I had to go get some mental health help because uh, it was, it was, it was getting pretty bad there and going through relationship coaching was another thing that was very helpful for me in learning that, oh, I can, I can be weak and, and share my weakness with others and they're not going to look down on me. This is, this is a huge concept. And learning that it's okay to be vulnerable and share my vulnerability with others, you know, just as long as I'm not making them feel like they've got to be my therapist. <laughs> you know? I'm not, I'm not emotionally vomiting on someone, mm -hmm. but I can say, Hey, look, man, you know, this is hard on me and, and I'm struggling and I'm not asking you to solve this problem for me, but this is, this is what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And being able to share that with people was so freeing that I could be 
my authentic self, that I could share truly and honestly, this is what I'm going through. And yeah, I'm feeling weak. I'm feeling wrecked. I'm feeling scared. And sharing that and having people go, wow, yeah, that, I, I've felt that way too. And, and it makes it so we relate to one another. That was something I learned is that, you know, if I'm trying to be Superman and trying to be the big strong guy who doesn't uh, emote and just be that rock, well, you know, rocks break. Yeah. <laughs> rocks, rocks can break and people can't really relate to a rock, mm -hmm. but they can relate to another human being. And so when I learned I can be vulnerable and honest and share that and just put it out there, my relationships changed and for the better. And my marriage started getting better. And I was able to communicate better with my kids in a way that, uh, you know, they're going to learn how to be more authentic themselves and they won't have the problems that I had when life gives them adversity because of course it'll, it'll come for them but they'll be better equipped to adapt and change because they'll be able to say yeah this is this is my authentic self here these are my thoughts and it's okay for me to share those thoughts and feelings so the breakdown really gave me a breakthrough and I think that's what authenticity really is, is having that radical honesty with yourself and with others. That's so, that's such a powerful story. And, and as you're describing it, I can, I can feel that emotional roller coaster as you were going through it, you know, things, it was working perfectly at some point and suddenly it starts to crumbling, it starts to breaking down and you're wondering, you know, what's going on here. And then suddenly you realize that, you know, I don't have to be strong. I don't have to be perfect. I'm a human being. Um, it's okay to share my vulnerability. What, what do you think is the biggest drawback um, I think now, nowadays, more men feel more comfortable in sharing their emotion, being vulnerable. But, you know, I, I, I'm thinking back in, you know, maybe years, like five, 10 years, where the society is still very strongly believed that, you know, that, that uh, masculine men are, are meant to be out there, to be strong, that cowboy um, believed in culture. It was really strong based on that. What do, you, what do you think is the biggest holdback for a lot of these men who still have that cowboy beliefs? Uh, I think there's, there's a, a line to walk. There's a balance. Uh, it's, it's hard, like I said, it's hard for others to relate to someone who can only show one emotion and that would be anger. I mean, that's, that's okay. Uh, according to that type of thinking, it's okay for men to show anger, but, but anything else, mm, not so much. There's, there's a line there where you can be a strong masculine man, but you can also have this strength and it does take strength and bravery to step into your heart and put your heart out there for other people. And uh, it, it's, it's very difficult for us men to do that in, in the culture that we live in. Uh, things, things are changing and, and we're learning, but we men are very, protective of our hearts and we put a lot of walls up and we're taught to put those walls and that armoring over our hearts and it it takes some bravery to step out of that box and let go of that armoring and be radically honest with yourself and saying yeah this is this is how I'm feeling. Yeah, this is, 
this is weakness. This is, this is scared. This is not feeling very happy or good. And in some cases, we guys are so disconnected from our emotions that we don't even have the vocabulary to express it. And so learning how to even talk about emotions becomes a step in the right direction. But once we're able to start communicating those things, we become so much more uh, attractive and magnetic, I believe, especially to the opposite sex, especially to our women, because women really communicate a lot through feelings. Yeah. And so <laughs> when we men can learn to speak that language, holy moly, that, that really makes a difference in a relationship. So finding that balance between keeping your, your masculinity and yet being able to speak an, an emotional language uh, is, is kind of a fine line to walk, but it's there, it's doable. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it, it makes men so much more strong and relatable when we do. Yeah. And, and we're probably going to have less uh, spouse yelling at their uh, the significant <laughs> each other, right? Less fight. Yep. <laughs> As, uh, have more understanding. I, I, I love what you just shared. And I also wanted to um, lead that into um, how do you find, if, if you can share like maybe one or two tips, um, how do you actually find that in their fox? How do we, how do we know it's there? You know, my, my definition of an inner fox is the unique personal power that the good Lord gifted you with at the moment of your creation. And so it's, it's a matter of self-discovery and finding out what lights you up, what, what makes you energized, and what, what kind of drives you forward in life. And that varies from person to person. For me, I, I've, the things that drive me are, are helping people and witnessing their transformation, um, being, being thanked for doing a good job. Man, that lights me up. I want to do more good jobs because I really soak in that praise. Um, other things that, that kind of light me up are, are things, things of beauty that have a high aesthetic quality. Um, I, prior, prior to COVID, I would show up to work in a suit and tie and mm -hmm. look good for my patients. I mean, now, now I actually have to wear scrubs, which scrubs in a lab coat and, it's, it's, and a mask and it's just so doggone ugly, but I'm, I'm looking forward to the days when I can come back to work dressed up for my patients. Mm -hmm. But that's what drives me and others it's different and discovering what it is that lights you up that gives you energy that motivates you that that really makes you enjoy life that's the inner fox that gets you just feeling foxy and fine and sassy and yeah it's gonna be a good day today man because i got this going on I, I know you left one that one thing out, and it's a sci-fi that lights you up. <laughs> yes, indeed, I am a big science fiction and fantasy nerd. I mean, from uh, from a young age, I think middle school, I started reading C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien, and uh, I. I I used to watch uh, Star Trek, the, the Next Generation. Oh man, that was one of my favorite shows as a kid. And then in the 90s, there was Farscape, loved Farscape. Uh, and right now I'm, uh, I'm just devouring Brandon Sanderson novels. Love that guy's work. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I would say J.R. Tolkien is really one of my favorites. So I have books um, from him. I, I adore him. <laughs> and um, one of the quote that he said was, um, "One little by little, one travels far. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. yeah. Little by little, one travels far. 
Yeah, very, uh, I, I tell my patients baby steps and each step gets you that much further ahead and pretty soon over time it, it works. Um, and I have to laugh because I, I got that concept <laughs> from uh, an old movie that starred uh, Bill Murray and Richard Dreyfus. It was called, uh, What About Bob? <laughs> And it is, it, it's a hilarious comedy, but uh, baby, baby Steps was a concept in that movie and uh, mm -hmm. it was just absolutely hilarious to me. And it's, it's always stuck with me. Yeah. And so I wanted to, um, first of all, uh, thank you so much for coming to the show. And, you know, one last thought before we wrap up for today is we talk about baby steps. And I think throughout the journey, you took a lot of baby steps. What would be a baby step that you are taking right now? And what does that future look like for you? Right now, the baby step that I am taking uh, is, is journaling. I'm, I'm learning how useful a journal and, and writing my thoughts down is. Uh, I, I can have a vision for the future and, and write those thoughts down. And when I write those thoughts down, they become more concrete and they, they spur me on to take further action to make that vision happen. And it's, journaling's been so helpful for me in, in processing my own uh, emotions and, and getting real with myself and writing down, okay, this is what I'm thinking and feeling right now. And then I can look back at that and go, okay, is, is that true? Is that really how I feel? Or is that some sort of story that I'm making up? in order to justify whatever actions that I'm trying to take. Is this, is this really the truth? And so I can start mulling that over and really delving down into here in my head and here in my heart mm -hmm. and come to a better understanding of myself and my own authenticity. So journaling is, is big stuff. And that's, that's the baby step that I'm taking right at the moment. I love it. Uh, I love journaling. I'm a journal um, addict, so I have tons of journals. <laughs> uh, one, one last thing. I know you have a podcast. What's the name of your podcast and what is it about? Oh, my, my podcast. It's, uh, it's called The Get Foxy Show. We talk holistic health, natural beauty, and passionate living so that you can amplify, cultivate that inner fox that you have and i interview experts on all sorts of different topics but mostly holistic health and and beauty and then when i say passionate living people that inspire other people in ways to better their lives and so i i find it to be uh, a mission to kind of spread positivity in into the world and i'm having a lot of fun with it i've I, done it for about three years now and uh, I, I get to meet such cool people and podcasting just allows me to connect to people I would have never connected with before like like you Michelle so <laughs> it's so much fun it is a lot of fun <laughs> and I'm gonna check out your podcast because I feel yeah there's a lot of things I love that spread of positivity and when we first connected that's how I felt about you and you know, it, it just, it bring, makes the world brighter and makes my heart light up. So I love and I really, truly enjoy being able to connect with you. You bet. Well, the feeling's absolutely mutual. Thank you so much for coming, Terry. It's been a pleasure speaking with you this morning. And I know there's a lot of great things that you're going to be working on. Um, can you tell us where to find you? You bet. Uh, you can, of course, find my podcast at thegetfoxyshow.com or it's on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Pandora, and Amazon Music. And if you want to learn more about my 
work as an acupuncturist in my practice here. You can find more about that at Artesian Spring, the letter O for Oriental, the letter M for Medicine. So ArtesianSpringOM.com or just Google Terry Fox acupuncture and I'll come right up. <laughs> and I will have all of that in my episode notes so people will have easy access to them. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you so much for coming. All right, everyone. Happy Wednesday. This is Live Coffee Talk, and this is going to be aired every Wednesday at 8 o'clock Pacific time. So make sure you tune in and watch this live, or you can visit my website at elevatelifecoaching.org to watch more previous episode. And I will be back to bring you more love, courage, and connection. And I will see everyone next week. Bye. Bye, Terry.